What's going on everybody? Had a chance to test out this Garmin R10, do a couple of things to it as well uh, from feedback from you in the community. So thank you so much for that. Got some exciting things to talk about, so let's do it. Hey everybody, Scott Hogan coming at you. We're back here, we're in the lab here and uh, we are working with the Garmin R10. So we were able to do a couple of things uh, over the weekend and getting a chance to use this device more. And I gotta say, uh, it got more impressive, so that's good. I think there's a lot of positive things that have been uh, changed. So we'll go through all that. Make sure to click that subscribe button down below. We're gonna go through a round and stuff like that too, so don't miss out on any of that as we have that coming in. So help you make some decisions for what monitor is gonna work best for you. All right, so a couple of things have changed since the last time we used this device and uh, it's actually been a lot for the better. So the first thing is, uh, thanks to everybody telling me, uh, they let me know that there is a software update that's available right out of the right when you get it. So I was using the right out of the box, this is what you're getting. Uh, what I had to do is you have to plug this into your computer and you get this Garmin Express app and what you do there is you're actually gonna be able to update the software using that. So it's a little bit, you know, like, hey, I didn't, how do you know that there's gonna be an update? So if I plug this in and it auto starts up, it's always gonna check. So I guess you could do that. But the update was very, very helpful in working with the unit. So there's a couple of things that I did with the unit over the weekend. So first things first, uh, took it out and I actually used it with students. So we had it on the range and I just wanted to see, hey, is this a viable tool maybe that would help me as a teacher? Or if I had players practicing, hey, you can look at your stuff. Now we run into the same issues. Alignment is extremely tough with this. And, and that's the case, I guess, with all launch monitors, but this is extremely tough when you're on the range and you're trying to line up something and you're trying to get club path and face uh, and see where those are at and get some accurate numbers, you have to take them with a grain of salt. There's no doubt about that. Even though, you know, again, I was able to use it. Uh, I had two very different students trying to do two very different things and they're both at kind of two very different places. One, you know, going from 120 shooter, currently trying to break 90 and getting very close. So it's like, all right, hey, we're working on that. And then we have another player who was a 100 shooter who is now working on trying to break par. So they have very different goals and very different things we're doing. but. It was nice to see the unit kind of match up a little bit with what we're doing as far as club path. You know, one of them we're trying to hit a fade, so we need a club path that's a little bit more left, whereas the other one we're working on getting rid of a fade, so we need the path more right, and those things seem to be working out. It also seemed to be matching up with the ball that I was seeing. You know, our young man here that was hitting driver, once we started working on getting his angle of attack and getting that backspin number to come down, we did see that ball go farther. And as always, we were just shooting things with the range finder. That's how we kind of can tell what where our distances are on our range. So we were getting a good idea that, hey, yeah, it seemed pretty good as far as those numbers. The other thing that got fixed by the software update is all the backwards club path and face, that seems to have been corrected with the update. So where I'm hitting a shot and it's fading and it's saying the club path was right and that all seemed to be taken care of, okay? So uh, it seems like that is making a lot of sense now. So that was a good thing. The ball flight also was looking better. Um, it still can occasionally, like it, here's the thing with these devices and this is gonna be the most obvious statement, the better you hit the ball, the better it works. So if you hit one kind of crazy, you kind of have to disregard that um, because if it takes off at like a crazy angle, it doesn't do a great job of reading that, but that's true with the Mevo Plus, that's true with SkyTrack as well. You have to hit it somewhat straight and decent to get the better read. So we saw that. I did think that the unit was over exaggerating curves a little bit. You know, and watching my players, the ball wasn't moving uh, in some cases as much as it said. Now maybe that's just the perspective of what I'm looking at on the range and how it looks. Like it's kind of plain on the Garmin app, but it just looked like that a little bit. So overall though, yardage is still very good. It started to correct the ball flight. It's getting more and more appealing to use this unit. Again, that alignment thing, we've got some things that we're gonna try here for alignment issues, but that's, uh, that's gonna be the big thing to me is like, hey, how do I know this thing's lined up where I can trust what I'm getting on this, this device 
and the numbers that we're seeing. So that's that's just still the big question mark. And I still think the big thing that we're gonna have to look at. Did try out E6, was able to figure that out, got that all sorted out and you know got the five courses. Uh, you get all the same five courses except Band and Dunes is one of them now. And I can't remember which one they took out from last year, but uh, played Band and Dunes for a whole. Uh, it worked very well. You know, it's it's you hit a shot and this was outside. Uh, you hit a shot. It takes a second to read. But again, it does that with uh, the other monitors, too, because it's actually watching the ball fly. And then it sent it. Um, Distances on that, not really sure because I did have all the terrain penalties and stuff on. So I probably would want to turn that off um, just to get a feel for it. But again, I was trying to do this kind of quick, but it worked, worked great. The direction and stuff on that seemed pretty good. And uh, you know, so no real complaints there again. I also tried the Home Tee Hero app. I'm gonna be playing a tournament, playing a course. So I just decided to play a couple holes. And uh, you know, again, it's just not the same, I, I you know, it's not bad, like I don't hate it, but at the same time, it's like, it's not a simulator experience. Again, I think it's more of like, hey, I'm gonna go play this course and I wanna hit some shots and kind of game plan my way around. That's what I see it being more for. Um, but still, hey, it worked. Uh, his shots flew how they should, it, what it appeared, how the ball was flying outside and what we were getting. So that's a big bonus, I like that. So. Again, the upgrades on the software, that did a really, really good job, I think. Then I brought it inside. The, the big question a lot of people had was, how does it compare to Mevo Plus, uh, especially indoors? Outdoors, we, uh, we saw those differences, but I didn't test them again outdoors. I have a feeling it's gonna be a lot better. I did bring the unit indoors and we did a test. And we tried, I tried my best to set them up. When you got two radar units that have two different setups and they both rely on being dead, like accurate, with where you're hitting, and that gets a little bit challenging. So I did try to make sure like I had the Garmin, it wants to be at six feet, the Amiibo Plus, you know, it wants to be at eight feet. So I tried to stagger them a little bit. So the numbers as far as like club path face, that might be a little bit off, but I, I, my big thing was if I hit a shot, I wanna see it go the correct distance and have pretty much the same shape to the shot. And it did, very, very good. Uh, you'll see some of these pictures of, these are the same shots. The carry distances were within two or three yards. I did notice the spin number on the Garmin was always coming in low. However, the Mevo Plus was estimating its spin all the time. Now I think that estimated spin number is much closer to where I'm at with the clubs that I'm hitting. So just keep that in mind. But uh, it was reading low and we could try some metallic dots and stuff, but uh, We'll see if, that, if that's something we wanna do. But that was fine as well. We were getting the shape that we were looking for. I did play the Home T Hero app again. Same thing, we were getting a much better looking shape to it. Once in a while, again, with the, uh, when you hit one that's not perfect or not really super good, the Garmin would send one off a little crazy um, and kind of get the backwards flight. Like I hit one off the toe with the driver. Mevo Plus, I think correctly saw it based on what I feel. Uh, correctly saw like I hit it kind of high and right. Um, whereas, you know, because I hit off the toe, the Garmin had it snap hooking. Uh, I, the way it was hit, it definitely was taking off high and right. So that's uh, something there. But again, that's that only happened once out of the hits. And if you get, if you're not hitting it well, I don't think you're gonna get the value out of any launch monitors. So really impressed, happy that it worked well with students. I, I still am not gonna be putting it in right away, like, hey, this is my go-to for everything. But honestly, it's getting closer. Like, I, I think it's something I might actually use in teaching a little bit, uh, especially for me, I, I coach multiple people at the same time. So I might have a secondary, you know, have a secondary chance to have a unit with some numbers that I could use and then have the third with the Mevo Plus. I think that's really, really cool and something that might be really worth it in the long run. I mean, some of the things that you don't have skills challenge and stuff like that. I use that stuff all the time. So that's a huge bummer that like that doesn't exist yet. Maybe it will, but you know, this device for its cost, it's getting more and more impressive and it just came out. And you know, as we've seen with other monitors, they do tend to improve over time. So, you know, again, I've always used flight scope and all that, but I gotta say, this is very impressive device uh, for its cost. And I think there's a lot of value. Would I use it with like a tour player or a high level collegiate player? I don't think so, not yet at least, but 
for somebody that's getting into it, you want to hit shots, you want to start getting an understanding on some things, I think there's something there. And I think it's something that's worth maybe trying to check out. So if you got questions about it, leave it down below and uh, happy to answer them. And again, I'll do some simulation stuff and just play some rounds and let you know what it looks like. But, you know, very impressed. Let me know if you got questions about it. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.